everybody. My name is Nicole Elliott and I'm a technical analyst and private investor. And last week I did suggest that you look at quarterly charts because it might be worth your while. Well, I did, I don't know if you did, but a lot of other people did too. And the ones who were looking at the bond market, particularly the US Treasury market, to have some sort of signals as to what the Fed would do or wouldn't do, got rather excited because the first quarter of 2021 was one of the worst years for bonds and by implication corporate bonds as well uh, in the United States and in many parts of the world. So what's happened? My first chart here is a weekly chart of the price of a US Treasury two-year note. And as you can see from this chart, for the best part of the last two and a quarter years, we've been trading at or close to 0% because it's priced at par. Yep, a little bit over par, a little bit under par. Some people got excited suggesting that the move from a yield of 10 basis points, that's 0.1%, to 19 basis points, that's 0.19%, was significant and that the Fed was going to raise rates. Well, quite frankly, in my book, a move from next to nothing interest rate to a fraction of something interest rates is just not worth discussing. Then they got excited because it looked as though the 10-year Treasury had uh, backed up quite a bit more. And I must say, it has backed up more than I bargained for. And here again, you've got a weekly chart and you can see that very, very gently, starting at the very end of last year, yields on the 10-year benchmark had moved up a bit. So here on the scale on the right-hand side, you can see from a low of about half a percent, we moved up quite smartly in February. The bulk of the move was in February, and we moved up to a high of 1.75%. So, for a fact, what we did in, in the first quarter was go from 90 basis points to 175 basis points. Now, that's an almost doubling in the yield. That's an insignificant move, particularly when you're really short of cash. Now, simultaneously, the futures market, where prices move inversely with yields, the price of these dropped from $138 to $131. So that's a 5% loss in face value. So interest rates doubled. The bonds themselves lost 5%. This is the asymmetry between price and yield. It does not match exactly. My third and final chart is the uh, price of a German government bond. Right now, this one is jolly expensive. You're paying at around 175 euros per hundred nominal. And you have been doing so for the best part of a year. So we're not going anywhere fast. At a price of 175, um, the yield uh, basically moved from minus 0.6% to minus 0.25%. That's what's happened this year. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it really tricky to get my head around these negative interest rates. Is it good or bad? Are you up or down? Have you made money or have you not? Well, you can see here that in terms of the price move of your bund, you've gone practically nowhere. Today, the French government issued a brand new 10-year French OAT, at a yield of precisely 0%. Now, if this is the cost of fear of inflation, well, quite frankly, I mean, the whole thing is widely exaggerated, isn't it? You can see that this, the Bund has hardly moved in price. The French can get away with borrowing at nothing. The Germans is still negative. Well, come on. Now, compare this to the issue price of Deliveroo that dropped 30% on the opening bell. Oh dear. So bonds have had a bad year, but not nearly as bad as it might have been. Good luck and I'll see you next week.